Hello everyone. Today I have a really exciting video for you. We are going back to my roots with packing videos. When we left Calgary, I made a video featuring everything that I was going to bring with me for the year of full-time travel. Now we are nine months in, so I've been using this stuff basically every day for basically a year. In that first video, I said I was going to make a one-month update. And I have filmed this video four separate times, including one month into our travels. I got to the editing stages in some of them and I just didn't feel like any of those videos were good enough. Now that we've been in this Airbnb for a while and we're fully unpacked, I've had time to reflect on stuff that we've brought. And I think now I can give you a lot more valuable information about the stuff that I brought. So if you wanna see everything that we have with us, everything we still have and things that we've bought along the way that we realized we needed, make sure to keep watching and subscribe to the channel because it really does help us out. We just hit a thousand subscribers which means we make some money off of the ads published on this channel and your subscription really means a lot to us if you want to see us using all of this stuff check out the vlogs i've been vlogging the entire time like i said we're nine months in now and we've had such an amazing time in southeast asia and now eastern europe if you want to stay up to date with us all of the links for our socials will be in the description so without further ado i'm going to push you back and i'm going to bring out the bag i've been doing a lot of baking since we've been in Plavda, and I made some chocolate chip cookies, but I couldn't find baking soda because everything is in Bulgarian. And I don't think they have baking soda. I think they call it baking ammonium or something. Anyways, couldn't find that either. So I subbed baking powder and it doesn't really taste right. <laughs> I think that's it. Okay. So some of this stuff I have brought with me the entire time and some stuff I've picked up along the way. So I will let you know which stuff I've picked up along the way just so you can keep track. Kristen and I have slightly different packing strategies when it comes to our bags. We both have carry-on sized bags, but his is slightly smaller than mine. Mine's 40 liters, his is 32 liters. He is way more focused on utility and lightweight packing. Whereas I have a couple items that could be considered luxury items that just make me feel a little bit more comfortable and a little happier. My ideology is that if you're going on a long trip, you shouldn't feel like you have to sacrifice comfort for an easier time packing because at the end of the day, you're going to be having travel days way less than you're going to be just living. And if you're traveling long-term, every day is your life. So if having an extra tote bag or a journal and a couple pens will make you a lot happier, it's worth it to have to maybe hide your laptop in your pants when you're boarding the plane so they don't weigh your bag, <laughs> which is something that I've done. <laughs> so I just think wherever you fall on that spectrum, you should make that decision for yourself. You don't need to give up everything that you have at home just because now you are a lightweight backpacker traveling only in a carry-on. First, we're gonna talk about bags. <laughs> These are all of the bags that I brought. <laughs> we can't talk about bags without talking about the bag. This is my 40 liter backpack from Four Class is $90 from Decathlon. My sister has it, my sister's boyfriend has it, my best friend has it. I recommend this bag to everyone and everyone loves it. It's so, so good. This bag fits all of the carry-on size requirements for every airline we've flown on, including the low-cost carriers in Asia, like Peach, Air Asia, and Scoot. We've also flown on Batik, Garuda, WestJet, and Emirates, and we have not had a single issue. When you go backpacking, you'll see a lot of people with the Osprey backpacks. Osprey is a really great brand, but the bags are very expensive. And if you don't see this being your lifestyle, if you don't want to make that big of an investment, this bag has fared completely fine. There's not a rip, a tear anywhere on here. So you don't need to be influenced by all of these other travel bloggers to get the fancy Osprey bags with the pretty colors. This bag works totally fine. I did see it in tan though in Kuala Lumpur. Oh, wish I got that one. It has a padded laptop sleeve. You'll see it has two water bottle compartments as well. So you've got this stretchy one. I just jam pack this bad boy full of random stuff. Shampoos, conditioner, hand sanitizer, body wash, bug spray. Everything goes in here on travel days and I swear it will never fill up. Like it is like Mary Poppins purse. It will just fit whatever you need. It's also got a water bottle pocket on the other side, which I think is more of an appropriate size for a water bottle. It has this Easy access top pocket with a pickpocket seal. Fit the zipper right through there and then no one can get into it. Inside of this pocket, I keep random things or things that I don't want squished. I usually keep my claw clips in here and then it has a little key ring. And on this key ring, I keep three different keychains. The first one is this one my sister got me at the University of Calgary where we both went to university. And then the second is a key ring 
that my boyfriend's mom got me for graduation or my birthday. They were both basically the exact same time. It has a little engraving of my two dogs and their two dogs on it. And then the main feature is this AirTag. I did decide to get an AirTag for my backpack even though this is a carry-on sized bag because I wanted to be able to keep track of it on ferries and buses, especially ferries in Indonesia and in Thailand. They take your bag and they just toss it on top of the boat. Um, and then they just kind of unpack all the bags and it's a free for all. So I wanted to make sure that I know where my bag is at all times. So I have the air tag with the little case. And then the last pocket on the outside of the bag is this right here. If you're going to Asia, I would highly recommend a backpack. I really, really would advise you against bringing a suitcase, even if you're going to Europe, just because dragging suitcases on cobblestone streets is terrible. And in Asia, these sidewalks are really hard to walk on. There's like pop-up restaurants and cellars and motorcycles parked literally everywhere. So you're going to be hopping on and off the curbs and the sidewalks and the roads are super uneven as well. So I would highly recommend bringing a backpack. And on that same note, I would look for a backpack with hip straps. My bag has the straps, Carson's does not, and his kills his shoulders. So those are the features I would look to when buying your bag. The other one is having a bag that opens clamshell or suitcase style, like this one does. So let's talk about the inside pockets. My bag has four interior pockets that are all separated by mesh, so nothing falls out when you open it up like this. There's one huge pocket on this side, a medium-sized pocket with a really teeny tiny little zip pocket on the top of it, and then a smaller pocket here. On the big side, I put all of my clothes. In this medium compartment, I put tech stuff and journaling stuff and my toiletry case. And on this side, I have my second pair of shoes and then just miscellaneous stuff that doesn't fit in the medium-sized pocket. So now that we've seen the main backpack, let's talk about the other bags and organizers that I have. I have six packing cubes and they all came in a set from Amazon, which I will link down below. It is an affiliate link, so I will earn a bit of commission if you click on it. This set comes with all of the cubes you see here, even though they are different colors. Me, my mom, and my sister all have these same ones and are kind of mixed and matched. Um, so let's talk about the two biggest ones. These two packing cubes hold all of my clothes. Typically I have my pants and dresses in this one and all of my tops in this one. And then I have two cubes. These are the exact same. I just borrowed one from my mom's set. Um, this one holds my bathing suits and my swimsuit cover-ups. And this one holds all of my socks and underwear. And then two really important bags I definitely don't think you should skip out on. It first is a shoe bag. I brought two pairs of shoes with me. So if you're bringing any spare shoes and you're traveling in a backpack, I would highly recommend having a shoe bag um, just because it contains the smell and all of the dirt and sand that will be on that pair of shoes from getting everywhere else in your bag. And then lastly is a laundry bag. This really just helps contain things like dirty underwear, dirty socks, or things that are like muddy um, from getting everywhere else in your bag. Next is my collapsible backpack. You might've seen this in my Europe packing video and in the video I made before we left. This is my tried and trusted best friend when I go traveling. I bring this thing everywhere. It does compress into itself through this little pocket right here. This bag we use to go to the beach. We use it on our day trips. We used it to bring all of our stuff for overnight trips like in Khao Suk. Um, and we also use it as our personal item on longer flights or on the train. So we can put both our laptops and the deck of cards, that sort of thing in here um, and use this as a personal item. This is really, really great for that purpose. It's really nice on travel days to be able to have everything contained to a single backpack instead of having to have one on our chests like a lot of backpackers do. So we get to have the best of both worlds by having one bag on travel days with the option of having this smaller backpack. This is something I've acquired along the way. You may have seen when I left, I had my smaller Lululemon crossbody um, Team Canada bag, but that, that bag was just too small for our daily needs. It barely fit the camera and we wanted to have other things with us. We wanted to have hand wipes and hand sanitizer and a lip balm and be able to easily access tickets that we needed, that sort of thing. So you might recognize this bag. It is the one everyone's talking about. It's the Uniqlo crossbody bag. I picked it up when we were in Australia and I absolutely love it. You can tell it's super dirty. So it's going right in the wash after this. We typically keep hand wipes and hand sanitizer. This we started doing when we got to Malaysia because the food, we're eating a lot of food with our hands and a lot of saucy foods. So the hand wipes were necessary and the hand sanitizer is always good. You will be surprised how much stuff you're gonna wanna carry around on a day-to-day -day basis. And having a bag that's I think this looks quite nice, right? Like I would wear this out to a nicer restaurant with a dress. It's just, it's just nice to have a nice bag. So 
This is something I'm glad that I got. Lastly, we have a tote bag. This is also something I picked up when we were in Australia. It was a gift I got for Christmas. It's from Australia Post. It has little animals on it. Um, I saw people talking about bringing a tote bag with them when they travel, but I opted not to bring one when we first left and I kind of regretted it. Um, we do have the backpack to bring with us when we go to the beach or on hikes, but it's nice to have a bag like this just for more casual things like getting groceries or going to a market. If you're traveling long term, I would recommend all of these bags. I think they're all necessary. If you're just going on a short trip, like I'd say a month or less, I think you probably can skip out on the tote bag depending on your needs. If you're not doing hikes or things where you're gonna need a backpack, I think the tote bag would be fine. So now that we've gone through the bags, let's talk about the clothes. But you can't talk about the clothes without talking about capsule wardrobes, which is kind of the ideology I follow a little bit. So a capsule wardrobe is a bunch of basic staple pieces that can mix and match together so you have a ton of outfits. It typically means having like three or four pants that go with your five or six shirts so you can make 24 different outfits. <laughs> The, one of the issues that I have with capsule wardrobes is that you typically don't have a lot of statement pieces. Um, and while I don't wear a lot of statement pieces, I found that I got really tired of the black and white clothing that I brought and I wanted a lot more colors. The other issue that is just personally for me that I have with capsule wardrobes is that I don't have a lot of pants. Like I wear the same jean shorts every day. And so it, that doesn't lend itself well to developing a capsule wardrobe. So this is all to say, you don't need to buy all new clothes and develop this really sophisticated wardrobe to go traveling. These clothes that I brought have served me perfectly fine. <sighs> this is my second time filming this because I just ramble so much. <sighs> If you want a full video breaking down the clothing, I can do a full video on this. So I'm just going to try to go quickly through. We're going to start with my short sleeve tops. I have two blouses. I love both of these. This one's been with me the whole time. It's my absolute favorite. This one I swapped out when Kristen's mom came. I did end up sending two blouses home, my pink wrap top one and my white halter neck one. I think two blouses is perfect in Asia, especially because I just found myself reaching for my more athletic-y tops way more because of the heat. So speaking of which, I have this black tank top with the built-in padding that I absolutely love. It's my absolute favorite. And then this black bodysuit that I also wear all the time. I used to have this exact same top, but in blue and I sent it home because it got a stain and I didn't end up wearing it as much as I wore this one. And then I have four new shirts that I picked up while we were in Australia. This white tank top, this green tube top that I never really wore in Asia because it wasn't conservative enough. This white t-shirt and this blue t-shirt, both from Uniqlo. I absolutely love this t-shirt. I did end up sending home my Levi's t-shirt just because I reached for this one a lot more than that one. So all in all, I have three tank tops, a tube top, two t-shirts, and two blouses. I think for Asia specifically, having at least one t-shirt, three tank tops, and two blouses is perfect. Okay, moving on to long sleeves. I have this thermal heat tech long sleeve that I picked up in Indonesia at Uniqlo and it has come in so clutch for me. It's super lightweight, super thin. It fits in my bag so well, but it keeps me so warm, especially when we are hiking Mount Bromo and Ijen in the middle of the night. This keeps me so warm. Even though Asia is a tropical climate, I would highly recommend bringing a long sleeve with you. The interior of hostels gets really cold, trains, any sort of camping you're doing, if you're going to Khao Suk, you're gonna be a little chilly. So I'd highly recommend. I also have this long sleeve top that's been with me literally since the beginning. It came with me to Europe. I absolutely love it. And then I have two cardigans. You can probably get away with one. I just got this one sent to me because I'm adapting my wardrobe to fit springtime in Europe instead of the tropical Asia climate. This I literally could not live without. It is my white cardigan and I throw it on over all of my tank tops in the evenings. I use it to cover my shoulders and arms in the moss and I absolutely love it. A lot of people advise you against traveling with white. You can tell I have a lot of white in my wardrobe and I've had this for nine months and it's not yellow at all. It has gotten a little gray, but I think white is such a beautiful cardigan color, so I wouldn't give it up. The other cardigan I just brought is this little red one I wear all the time when I'm at home. But like I said, you probably don't need more than one cardigan. Moving on to skirts and dresses. I do have two dresses. I've had these the whole time. I haven't replaced them. One longer dress 
and then one shorter sundress. And then you'll also need something to cover your knees for the temples and the mosques. When we were in Angkor Wat, I picked up a blue skirt that I wore a bunch, but then I ended up sending it home. It wasn't really my style and it was really heavy. And then I found this beautiful silk wrap skirt at a market in Kuala Lumpur and I've been wearing it ever since. It's a little dressier, so I wore it up to dinner at the Marina Bay Sands and I just absolutely love it. The rest of my pants, I have one pair of jean shorts. You may notice these are different than my original packing video. I wore my others into the ground, so I just replaced them. I don't have two. I also have a pair of athletic shorts I brought the entire time. This was great when we were doing stuff in the jungles in Thailand. And then I also have a pair of Lululemon leggings. I don't really wear these outside of the plains and some of the outdoor stuff we're doing like the Bromo and Ejen hike. So if I was gonna cut something, I would probably choose to leave these behind, but they're pretty small and they're lightweight. So if you have the room, you might as well throw them in. The last pair of pants I have are these jeans you might notice I'm wearing right now. I didn't have these when we were in Asia and if you're going to Asia, I would not recommend bringing jeans. It's just way too humid and jean material feels too tight around you. Even my shorts at times felt a little much. I only have these because like I said, we're in springtime in Europe now, so it's a little cooler. The last thing I have, I also picked up in Australia. We all got matching pajamas for Christmas and I didn't have pajamas when we first left. I would just wear my athletic shorts or my linen shorts, um, but I really liked having these to lounge around in, so I brought them with me and I absolutely love them. <laughs> I also had a pair of linen shorts that I got for Christmas in Australia. I wore them the whole time in Indonesia. They're great as a beach cover-up. So are my black athletic shorts, um, but I just didn't think I needed that many pairs of shorts for the new climate we were going to, so I sent those home. But having a lightweight pair of shorts was really nice when we were in Asia. I sent back the sweater that I brought with Tanya because I wanted to get a new one while we were here in Bulgaria, but I did have a crew neck with me for the entirety of the trip, which is also something I wouldn't skip out on. Do not be deceived by the fact that you're going to a warm climate outside because inside it gets very cold. I would also definitely opt for a crew neck over a hoodie because the hoods take up a lot of space and you will never wear it. And then we have socks. I cannot preach this enough merino wool socks for backpackers is literally the only way to go i've had these for nine months worn them they've been on multiple volcano hikes multiple mountain hikes they are so good not a single hole in them they're literally perfect i started off with two pairs and i only had two up until we got to australia so for six months i only wore this and one other pair and then i got two more pairs that are higher rise and they are perfect they're brilliant i would highly highly recommend and then lastly are bathing suits. When we were in Asia, I had two pairs of bathing suits. The ones that I brought were a little flimsy. So I ended up picking this up in Koh Phi just so everything was a little bit more contained while we were doing things like cliff jumping and snorkeling. Depending on the climate that you're packing for, I would say don't bring more than two bathing suits for Asia. They really do take up a lot of space. Um, and now that we're in Europe and we're not gonna be swimming every day like we were there, I only have brought this one. I also have a hat, which is super important to keep the sun off of the top of your head and your face. Your scalp will burn so quickly in Asia, so it's really important to try to protect your scalp and your face from the sun. Before we talk about toiletries, we should talk about liquids. For as long as I've been alive, the rule has been that you cannot bring more than 100 milliliters in a single bottle like this, and they have to be contained to a certain bag size. Usually they give them to you at the airport. I've been hearing since around 2021, 2022, that those rules could be changing. And over our travels, we have seen different rules at literally every single airport we've been to, from Northern Asia, like Japan and Korea, to Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, Australia, and Europe. In Perth and Bali, they didn't even make us take our laptops or our liquids out of our backpacks. And in Singapore, Carson brought a 120 milliliter toothpaste through security. I think behind the scenes, the rules are changing and nothing is really directly communicated, at least not that we saw. There aren't big banners or anything telling you that the rules have changed, but I think they're slowly changing their rules as our security screenings have increased in quality and the technology has gotten better. So, one thing that has been consistent across all the airports is that they don't make you contain these 100 milliliter bottles to a single bag anymore, at least in the majority of the airports that we've flown in and out of. So check with the airports if you're nervous about it. My recommendation would be to try to keep things under 100 milliliters for the time being, but just know that the security processes are changing. We have been bringing way more than one bag full of liquids with us, um, and we have never gotten stopped. So with that in mind, let's get into all of the toiletries. So this is all of my makeup and toiletries that I brought with me. 
I'll start by going over my toiletry kit. I got this off of Amazon and I absolutely love it. It holds everything on this table, my toiletries and my makeup and all of my hair stuff. It opens like this and you can hang it up. It's got a top part where I keep all my hair elastics. This holds all of my makeup and these little mesh pockets hold just kind of miscellaneous things like nail clippers. And then all of my toiletry stuff goes down here. Let's start with hair stuff. So I have my full sized wet brush. I only ever use wet brushes. I absolutely love them. They do make smaller travel size wet brushes and I was considering it before we left. But like I said at the start of the video, it's nice to be able to brush your hair with a full size brush, especially when you're traveling for this long. So for the difference in space between this brush and the travel size brush, I just thought it's not worth all of the hassle and I adore this brush. I also brought a comb with me that I use to pull out kind of my face framing pieces. And then I have two claw clips. I absolutely love claw clips. I'm going through such a claw clip phase. I have this bigger one that holds all of my hair and this smaller one that I use to do half up, half down hairstyles. And then my hair accessories, I have a big scrunchie from the Lululemon Team Canada collection that I adore. And then I have two different types of hair elastics. Both of these I absolutely love and they're super gentle on my fine hair. And then I have some of the just generic plastic little rubber bands that I use to tie the ends of my hair when I'm doing braids. And then some bobby pins and hair clips just to add a little bit more spice. Okay, speaking of hair care, I also have a bottle of shampoo and conditioner. These are both, these are both travel sized. And honestly, I would recommend you buying travel sized shampoo and conditioner before you leave and then filling up these bottles as you go. Usually what we do is if we're not getting on a plane for a while, we'll buy a full size bottle, but I'll keep these small ones that I've been carrying with me for so long. And then when we do have to get on a plane, I'll just empty whatever's left of those bottles into these travel size. You can buy shampoo once you get there, but buying them ahead of time just means that you have shampoo that you know you're gonna like for when you get off the plane and you're tired and you're jet lagged and it's one less thing you have to worry about. And you don't have to use the hotel shampoo if you don't want to. Hotels never have conditioner. I have never ever seen that. So if you have dry hair like I do, definitely buy a conditioner ASAP or bring one with you. The other thing that I have that I absolutely love, I picked up in a random Indian market in Malaysia, is this hair oil. It's from the brand Safi. It's pure olive oil with rosehip. And I've been putting it in my hair at the ends and to oil my hair every once in a while. And it makes my hair feel so soft. I'm so happy that I got this. <laughs> okay, let's move on to skincare. I only have two types of skincare, which I really had to cut down because at home I have a ton of stuff. I swear by the CeraVe PM Facial Moisturizing Lotion. And I wear this all the time, not just in the PM. It is so good. I love this. It's so lightweight. And then on top of that, I always put a sunscreen. I love this one from Garnier. It's what I wear at home all the time. To wash my face, I have this travel soap container with a mesh soap saver in the bottom and this bar of soap. This is my absolute favorite soap in the entire world. It's called Let Me Be Your Honey and it's from Ground Soap. I've spoken about it before. It is my aunt's business. All of their soaps are food grade and come from all natural materials. They've been running this company my entire life. I'm so proud of them and how they've grown it. And it just is literally the best soap I've ever used. My entire family, this is what we use to wash our face. And it smells so good and it's so good for you. So I will link them down below if you wanna support their small business. Also in the skincare vein is this Garnier Micellar Water. It's what I use to take my makeup off. And I also have cotton pads, nothing special. I got these ones in like Vietnam. <laughs> I have this deodorant from the brand Hello is my favorite. It is vegan and cruelty free. I absolutely love it. It smells like coconut. My toothbrush with this travel container. This is the only travel cover I would recommend for your toothbrush. You definitely need one when you're traveling. And the toothbrushes that flip open that you see in the travel sections of every store get disgusting. Do not buy them. It's the only thing I am firm on. Do not buy those. Do not. Get one of these instead. And you can bring multiple, bring backups. These, these you can wash. The other ones make your toothbrush disgusting. Anyways, <laughs> we also have toothpaste. And then I have two types of lip balm, a regular lip balm, this is from Blistex, and then a lip balm that has SPF in it. And then I have my favorite hand cream from home. And I also have this jelly cologne I picked up from that same Indian market in Malaysia. And it smells so good. Oh, and it lasts for such a long time. I love this so much. 
The majority of these products are vegan and cruelty free, except for these two. These two are cruelty free, but I do not know if they're vegan. Um, and Pantene, the shampoo and conditioner that I had at one point, it's not Pantene anymore in here, um, is not vegan or cruelty free. Everything else, as far as I'm aware of, is vegan and cruelty free. A couple more toiletry items. I have my razor. The razor that I have is Venus with the removable tips and I would recommend bringing a couple of the removable heads with you because I could not find them anywhere in Asia. And I also have it in this little silicone travel case. It's a little bulky. I also have nail files and a tiny nail clipper. These are super easy to forget. Do not forget them. And then I have my Diva Cup. They basically do not sell tampons anywhere in Southeast Asia, at least that I saw. So if that is what you want, know that you can't get them here. <laughs> I also have a face razor that I use to shape my eyebrows. And then I have this tiny container I got off Amazon that stores perfume. I saw everyone talking about this online. So I put my favorite Coco Mademoiselle by Chanel perfume in here. And it all leaked out. Oh, but it smells so good. <laughs> so these things, I don't know if I just got a defective one or if they don't work for that long. They leaked out after about a month. Now moving on to my makeup, all of this stuff is vegan and is cruelty free. I know for a fact because all of my makeup is from e.l.f. I love e.l.f. I am such a huge supporter of e.l.f. I am so proud of them and the growth that they've had. And I'm so happy that all of their products are vegan and cruelty free and they slap. They are so good. So I've got their bronzer, I've got their blush. I've got their powder, I've got their highlighter. This highlighter, you wanna know a non-glamorous, disgusting thing about me? This highlighter I've had since 2017. <laughs> I have their hydrating camo concealer, I have their eyeshadow, and I have their brow tint. The only two products I have that are not from e.l.f. are these two. I have this lip gloss, no idea where it's from because the entire label is ripped off. And then I have the CoverGirl Lash Flash Clean. This is vegan and cruelty free. I don't know if all CoverGirl products are vegan and cruelty free, but this specific clean line that they have is. And then for brushes, these are the ones I brought. This is my bronzer and blush brush. This, I blend my concealer in with this. Two eyeshadow brushes and my eyelash curler. So I'm a little disappointed to be honest. I remembered something else I forgot to mention because I just got it. Um, you might notice my hair looks a little bit straighter and more well kept than usual. And that is because Kristen's mom very nicely left me her mini hair straightener when she left Bali. This thing is teensy tiny and because it's so tiny, it is really light, it fits great in my backpack and it straightens my hair really, really well. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I would highly recommend. So that's my toiletries. Um, let's move on to tech. So this is where my stuff may start to differ from your stuff because I have a lot that is specific to content creation and filming. So let's start with the more generic things first. We brought our switch with us. This is super heavy and definitely if you don't have a switch or if you don't think you're gonna use it, you don't need to bring it. But we play on our switch all the time. We have a bunch of games and it's just something really fun to do in the hotel rooms. So we brought it to Europe and we're so happy that we brought it here as well. All of my cables I keep in this cable organizer that I got from Amazon. It's a great way to make sure everything stays put. So it's got two pockets. The first one looks like this and I keep all of my headphones in here. I brought one pair of wired headphones with the aux end so I can plug them into my laptop and then I brought the aux to lightning adapter so I can plug them into my phone. I have my laptop charger. I have my AirPods, which I use most of the time. And then we have our big power brick. When looking at power adapters, you typically have two options. This first one is the one that we brought to Europe with us and it comes with a long cable that plugs into the outlet in the wall and then this can sit flat on top of your nightstand or tables. The other option is one that looks like this. It comes with a bunch of different plug adapters built in and then you plug this directly into the wall. This one acts more like the sockets that you have at home. It literally just converts the sockets. You're gonna need a long cable to be able to rest any of your devices on top of a flat countertop. Both of these come with these sockets and then this one has two USB ports and two USB-C ports and this one has four USB ports. The reason this one's bigger is because it also comes with a power converter. So this converts the voltage, but all of your electronic devices will be able to do this on their own. So you only need to plug devices into a power converter if you're using something like a hairdryer. 
The other thing I definitely think you should invest in, especially if you're traveling with someone else, is this super cord that Kirsten got from Amazon. It has one USB that plugs into the power converter, and then it has two lightnings, one USB-C and one micro USB cable coming out of here. So we can both charge our phones and I can charge my headphones off this one cable. The next thing is an e-reader. I got this specifically for this trip and absolutely love it. The fact that you can have literally like a lifetime's amount of books stored just in here is so cool. I brought this to the beach in Thailand and I use it to read on trains. It's just such a fun form of entertainment. So I would highly recommend. And then we have our power bank. You can get power banks a lot smaller than this now, but this is the one that we have and it really comes in handy, especially on some of the tours we did where you didn't have consistent access to power or during the day, if you are out in the city and you want to charge your phone, definitely bring one of these. And now things that are kind of specific to content creation, or if you're planning on doing any sort of photography photography while you're gone. Really quick, we have this SD card reader. It takes SD and micro SD and also USB. So it plugs into the USB-C port on my computer and I can read all of my information. And then we have our spare GoPro batteries with the dual charger. We love this thing. It charges our batteries so fast. And then lastly, we have three different external storage devices. This is a one terabyte SSD that I was using at the start of the trip. This filled up, it's storing all of our footage from the start of the trip. This is a two terabyte SSD and it stores all of the footage from Malaysia onward. And it's what I currently work off of. So when I edit the vlogs, I will plug this into my laptop and get all the footage off of it. And it's where we dump all of the SD card footage on. And then we have a two terabyte hard drive. So Kirsten keeps this in his backpack at all times. And it basically just stores all of our footage and all of our important documents. It's just a backup. So we have things backed up on two different drives in two different backpacks. We also, of course, have my M2 MacBook Air. This is what I use for editing and it's our main source of entertainment when we don't have TVs. I love this laptop. It is so quick, it's so nice, and it's super light. Obviously we have my iPhone and then we have the GoPro with the media mod and the tripod, which is what you are on right now. We also have this floating handle for the GoPro. This is what we record all of our underwater footage on and then inside of it, the waterproof door for the GoPro. So I keep both of these together and this, this is airtight and waterproof. So you can store things in here when you're underwater. I just keep the arm inside of this because the only time I ever take the camera out of the mod is to go underwater. So both of these parts are together and they always stay together. So I don't lose that arm because that would be really disappointing. <laughs> so here is some of my personal stuff or miscellaneous stuff. We'll start with the fun stuff. So these are my two journals. I love journaling and I also really love art and drawing and painting. So this is kind of what I was talking about in the intro when I was talking about feeling the need to give up things that you like just for space and weight in your backpack. I didn't want to give this up, so I didn't. <laughs> I have two journals. The first is my bullet journal. I've bullet journaled every year for the past four or five years at home. And when we left for traveling, I felt like my life was missing something and it was disorganized and I didn't have enough structure to it. So when we had to medevac ourselves to Bangkok so that I could get medical attention for my bronchitis, um, we picked up this bullet journal in one of the stores there. I've just had a lot of fun making the pages and writing down about my week and tracking things. And I just love it so much. The second journal I have is my travel journal. And this one's been super fun. I've been keeping all of the ticket stamps and the other random papers we've gotten from the trip and making a little journal of everywhere we go. Um, so I'll show you some of my favorite pages. I had a lot of fun making this and it's been fun looking back now, especially because we're nine months in. It's been fun looking at some of the earlier pages and remembering everything that we did and seeing our passes and seeing plane tickets that we were that we were holding on to so tight in the airport, just being like scraps of paper in this journal now. <laughs> Um, and then to do the journaling, I have some pens. So this is what I left Calgary with, is just a couple of my favorite colored pens. And then this is my favorite pen in the entire world. It's what I use to write everything. It's the uh, Sharpie S-Gel pen. Um, and my mom found me this really pretty gold color. <laughs> and so I have some random pens and pencils. I have an eraser I got in Japan, and then a glue stick I got in uh, Surabaya. And then I also have some colorful, shiny pens that I got for Christmas in Australia from the family there. So that was really nice of them. That's all my journaling. And then we also have a deck of cards with us. You might remember I raved about the waterproof playing cards that we got from Amazon, and I still rave about them. They are one of the best things we brought with us on the trip. They didn't get dirty, they didn't get wet, like it was perfect. And then we lost one of them 
and you can't replace a fancy deck of cards like that just randomly at a store. So we have regular playing cards now, and they're already wet and ripped. You can tell I'm upset about it. <laughs> We also have my microfiber towel. I rave about this all the time too. If you're going to a beach destination, you totally should bring a microfiber towel. This is the size that we got. It basically just covers my head and my upper body, but it's really light and it's really small. And for the amount that we actually use it, I thought it's not worth it to bring the next size up, which is just so much bulkier. Um, so this size has been perfectly fine. I also have all of my jewelry in this cute little bag we got in Bangkok. I keep them in these little bags that I got from Dollarama before we left. Um, and they've come in so clutch. It holds all of my jewelry. You put individual pieces inside of the little bags and then it helps them not get tangled. And none of my necklaces have gotten tangled since putting them in here. I wear my favorite pieces every day. So this is kind of just extra stuff or stuff that I bought along the way. We have two wallets. So Kristen has the wallet that we use every day. And then the wallet that I brought, which is destroyed now, um, just holds all of our spare currency. So we have just random money in here. We have some Australian dollars. We have some Singapore dollars. We have some random Vietnamese dong. The last two things that I have are my reading glasses and my sunglasses these are super important if you're going to bring reading glasses bring them in a hard shell case not like this this one made them get squished and now my frames are stretched see don't know what to do about that so the last thing i have is my first aid kit and i'm going to talk about some other things that you really really should consider the first is the bag that the first aid kit comes in we just put it in a regular Ziploc bag and you should have a couple extra of these laying around. Ziploc bags come in so clutch. When we go on boating tours and we bring everything in that collapsible white backpack, we put our phones and wallets in Ziploc bags so they stay waterproof. We've come up with so many other uses just for these Ziploc bags. Like I keep the paper clippings for my journal in these just to keep everything organized. Definitely bring some Ziploc bags. And if you can get your hands on a stray plastic like shopping bag, that really comes in handy too if you need to put away wet bathing suits or something just having a plastic bag and a couple of ziploc bags shoved somewhere in your backpack for when you need them you will not regret it and then we just have some bandages some our prescription travelers stomach sickness medication some tylenol cold and sinus some disinfectant wipes and this weird thing we got when we didn't know i had bronchitis and thought i was just getting a cold or some weird respiratory thing it's, we saw people in Asia using this all the time. It's minty and you inhale it and people were doing this all day, every day and it just really clears out your sinuses. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it is so good. So we pick that up and have it just in case. Obviously a first aid kit is just in case stuff, but a lot of the stuff we decided to pack are things that we're not gonna really wanna have to go out and buy if we're feeling sick. We also have Advil, which I don't have here right now but like Advil, like Tylenol cold and sinus, like Kleenexes. If you want that kind of stuff, if you feel it coming on, it's stuff you're gonna want right away. Same with the band-aids. So I only brought two pairs of shoes with me. I have my running shoes and my Tevas. This combo was the best decision that I made. I have never felt like I needed other pairs of shoes. The running shoes are great for walking around cities and doing hikes. We did the Bromo hike, we did trekking in Sapa, we did Khao Suk, we did the big Yijin hike in the middle of the night and I didn't, I never felt like I needed more support or actual hiking boots. I thought that these running shoes served me perfectly fine. And then my Tevas are entirely waterproof. It's what I wore most of the time when we were in Asia because they're super easy to slip on and off. I think if you're going just for utility, these two are perfect. Shoes take up so much room in your bag and they're so heavy. So if you want to meet that seven kilogram weight requirement, shoes are potentially going to take up a lot of that. The only other pair of shoes I've ever considered is bringing something that looks like Birkenstocks or a light sandal like that to be a little bit more casual and dressy than the Tevas, but that's that. And the last things we have are non-physical things. We have copies of all of our important documents that are stored in multiple locations. I have copies of Carson's, Carson has copies of mine. We left copies with our family. I have mine stored on my family Dropbox. I have copies on my phone and my computer, just so that if anything ever happens to any of our documents, our driver's license, our birth certificates, our passports, we have copies. <laughs> These are the documents that we have and the documents you should consider keeping with you. Social insurance card, passport, Alberta Health for us or your healthcare card, birth certificate, driver's license, 
a bank statement because sometimes they request this at the border, copies of plane tickets, copies of your travel insurance, and a complete vaccination history. So I wanted to talk about some things that we didn't bring because I spend so much time watching other packing videos and taking notes. So before we left, I created the ultimate packing list, which is just a compilation of all of the things I've seen everyone else talk about. And then I decided whether or not I wanted to bring all of those things. So I'm gonna go over it with you. In terms of clothing, the only other piece that I would consider bringing is a pair of linen pants. I saw a lot of people wearing these. They're a great way to cover your knees for the temples and they could replace your leggings because they're super comfy so you can wear them on the planes, but they'll also keep the mosquitoes off your legs and keep you a little bit warm when you're doing camping or outdoor activities. I've also seen a lot of people talk about bringing dry bags with them. They sell these all over the place in places like Thailand. Anywhere where you're on an island or close to the water, you will be able to get your hands on a dry bag at a market. These things are great for if you're doing water activities like if you're going on day trips but Kristen and I haven't had one the entire time we were in Southeast Asia and I really think if you're not going to use it for more than just keeping your stuff dry on those excursions it takes up a lot more space than it's worth like I mentioned we put all of our valuables in Ziploc bags which kind of serves the same purpose I don't mind my clothes or the towel getting a little bit damp I really just want to keep my phone the wallet and any other important papers we have with us dry We've also heard or seen people bringing camping gear with them or camping associated things like forks and forks and reusable sticks, Tupperware containers so you can keep food with you that you make at hostels. This is something we really considered, but we never had a use for this. We never felt like we had food that we were wanting to bring multiple times and we were never in a situation where we needed a fork or we needed chopsticks and those weren't being provided to us. If we did want to take food with us like to the beach, we would put it in one of our Ziploc bags which are so much lighter and take up way less space. We've seen people bringing like sleep pads with them and sleeping bags or extra sheets. We were never in a situation where we felt like we didn't have clean sheets. In the hostels we went to, everything was provided like that. The mattresses being uncomfortable is just something you may unfortunately come across. It's not worth it to bring a sleeping pad with you. On a similar note, mosquito protection is something that is really, really stigmatized online. After talking with my pharmacist about taking anti-malaria medication and looking at the malaria maps, which you can get from your travel pharmacist, we didn't end up taking any malaria medication. We just avoided those areas and if we were in those areas momentarily we would always sleep under mosquito nets. You have to remember that people live in these places so you will never be at an accommodation where a mosquito net will not be provided for you if they are also sleeping under a mosquito net. Everywhere we went in all ranges of accommodations provided mosquito nets if you needed a mosquito net. One thing that you should pick up when you're here is the bug spray. You can get it at 7-Eleven or all the convenience stores. It's the best bug spray I've ever used. People rave about the Thai bug spray and it really, really works. We also didn't bring a lock with us. You can, we just typically don't stay in hostels and when we do stay in hostels, we'll get a private room because there's two of us. So we never needed a lock, but that is something that backpackers do recommend. People, al people also recommended bringing micro puffs or small down jackets that you can keep in your bag. I think if you're going to buy one specifically for the trip, you should just buy one here. We did, like I said, the promo and the e-gen hikes, which these volcano hikes are typically what people are talking about when they're talking about buying these jackets or doing the Haijang Loop or trekking in Northern Vietnam, which we also did. We were chilly when we did Mount Bromo, but they were offering blankets and they were offering jackets for sale or to rent when you were in those locations. The golden rule of backpacking that Carson and I follow is that people live in these places. You can buy things when you get here. I know the feeling of uncertainty and wanting to be prepared when you get to these unknown locations, but you might as well get there, feel it out, and evaluate the stuff that you need, especially because the stuff that you purchase there will be made for the environment. So that is everything I've had in my backpack for nine months of travel in Asia and in Europe. We still have a couple months to go. Luckily, I'm not sick of everything yet, but we'll see how I feel by the end of it. I talked a little bit about everything, but if you want me to go into more detail for anything that you see here, leave a comment down below and I can make a video on it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure you consider subscribing because like I said, it really helps out our channel and we love making videos for you guys. If you wanna check out some of our vlogs and see us using this stuff, check out the Asia Travel Series playlist on my channel. You can also head over to my blog, it's hannahgoodard.com and find the full packing list there. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day wherever you are and I will see you in the next video. Bye.